What's happening, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in today. Got a very special guest that I've been uh, wanting to bring on for a little while. And it's sure enough, the timing is great because you guys like trades, right? And uh, the Vancouver Canucks, Lindholm, we're going to talk. Lindholm, we're going to talk the Vancouver Canucks going all in this season. I got a little something for Clay to ri ri <laughs> rifle off for you guys for that quote because there's something more to it. Uh, what's been the key to success for the Vancouver Canucks this season? But first of all, Clay, thank you for joining, my friend. I appreciate it. Drew, thanks for having me, man. I've been watching your growth, your ascent to the top of Montreal Canadiens <laughs> YouTube. Um, and no, it, truly, it's a, it's a, my pleasure to be here. And uh, we're both grinding, working hard, supporting our team, supporting each other. So it's it's wonderful to collab with you. Thanks for having me on. It's a, it's a great time to be a Canucks fan. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, like what a turnaround. Okay, so like yeah. this is going to be fun to chat with you about today. And I, and I should mention, yes, I found a reason today to wear the one and only Vancouver Canucks jersey I have. <laughs> Beautiful. Hope you're not too warm sitting in your room there. That's, that looks great. I feel great, man. It's okay, very good. comfortable. Very comfortable. Good. And you actually had the same logo on today on your shirt. So yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah. All over <laughs> so, the place. Yeah. It's so vintage, though. This logo is, to me, like what we grew up with in the 90s, right? Pavel Bure comes to mind, obviously. You yeah. know, just the Russian rocket buzzing around. and uh, For sure. But, but where did it all start with, with you, man, in Vancouver? Because you're a season ticket holder. Yeah. You're a Canucks YouTuber. You, you're an award-winning Canucks YouTuber, I might add. And Appreciate I just want to know from our side also uh, how it all started for you as a Canucks fan. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm turning 50. I think I got about 15 years on you. So I'm turning 50 this You don't look June. it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. And I grew up listening to every single game. Of course, back then the games weren't on TV. So me, my brother, my dad, listening to all the games on CKNW here in Vancouver. And then go to a game here and there, but didn't become a season ticket holder until 2010, 2011. And of course, that what an amazing year to become a season ticket holder. Oh, so yeah. I did that. And then basically around a couple of years before that, I started my YouTube journey. But back then, it was more about my family, my faith, my job, that kind of thing. And I actually started vlogging more about the Winter Olympics when they were in Vancouver in 2010. Saw that I um, I really enjoyed it. I loved the, the content creation, the creativity part of it. Started to grow a small audience. Then I started to do more Canuck stuff on YouTube as I became a season ticket holder, not daily, but, uh, and then um, it was actually two Seahawks videos when the Seahawks went back to back in the Super Bowl, I'm yes. a musician as well. So I did a couple of parody songs with a couple of my much more talented and better looking friends. Um, no, one was, <laughs> no one was watching the videos, Drew, to see the fat Asian guy playing the piano, I'll tell you that much. So it was really, <laughs> it was really good. And then my channel blew up a little bit, uh, it grew a lot. Then these guys realized I'm a Canucks vlogger, not a Seahawks vlogger, then it shrunk a little bit. And then uh, more from the mid 2015s as social media became more prominent, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, I, I do all the old ones. Um, that's when my channel started to grow a little bit. It's growing really steadily. I'd say since the bubble, because pandemic, no one's going to games, people are at home on their computers looking for content creators, content to watch. And so it's been a very steady growth um, on my channel. Love it. Love the chance to be creative, live streams, uh, parody songs, that um, uh, post-game analysis, previews, uh, breakdowns, whatever it may be. But I have having a blast and all, um, yeah, I have a wife and three older kids that support me. Let me let me do my thing from my home office and they just know not to bother daddy at 11 p.m. at nights kind of thing. So when I do my, <laughs> when I do my nightly shows. So thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, that's so fun, man. Like the, the thing I enjoy watching and following you the most on X or Twitter, whatever you want to yeah. call it nowadays, is the family dynamic that you guys have. It's awesome with your three kids and appreciate you just, that. You're looking for positivity online, right? And you're looking for yeah. it on Twitter, especially. So yeah. when you're sharing, you know, all your pictures with your family and your kids, it just, it, it does bring a bright light to what can be a pretty toxic platform. So I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you, man. I, I started the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. And it's, uh, I think there's <laughs> only like three of us in it, but really it's self-admitting. <laughs> there's no membership. You just, if you're good looking, uh, you know, self-admitting. And if you're a positive Canucks fan, then I, I want you riding with me. And no, it was actually a, a fun little tongue in cheek response to all the negativity that was happening, especially here, because uh, you don't, you discount the bubble. We haven't been in the playoffs since 2015. So it, it's been a long time. Well, I think you guys are well on your way now. Uh, <laughs> just throwing that out there. So I think I'll jump right into it with you, man. So this Lindholm trade where we saw, we saw Calgary, um, you know, get quite the haul to, Mm -hmm. to, to trade the number one centerman at the top of the trade bait list yeah. pretty much for this coming trade deadline on March the 8th. So uh, you, I, I did see your reaction to Lindholm, you know, so for those that have not at this moment, just tell us your thoughts on this trade sure. and the Canucks going 
all in. Well, this is the thing. You can't spell Alvin without all in. If you can't figure <laughs> it out, just, just take out the V for Vancouver or victory. Okay, Drew, <laughs> here's the thing. Uh, no one expected this amount of success. I know we're going to talk about why the Canucks are so good this year. No one expected this. So Patrick Alvin, the general manager, Jim Rutherford, the president, they've said basically for the past month, we owe it to our players. That who knows if we're ever going to be this good again, uh, cut the market on fire, everything. So we owe it to our players to try and, and put together a championship team. And they never used the term all in. They never said, push all your chips in the table. They never said, they haven't said any of that. Because that's just kind of the way that Alvin and Rutherford roll. They're steady. They don't leak anything. And they're just, they've just turned around this team in a span of two years. So all to say, um, I think there's one of those rare hockey trades, Drew, where both teams, you could, they can say that they won. I think a lot of times because we get so passionate and loyal to our own teams, we want to say, oh, we crushed them in that trade. Oh, we're going to, you know, we destroyed them. But no, uh, for Vancouver, they got a guy who basically checks off four massive boxes. Right-hand center, great in the face-off circle power play penalty kill and instead of grabbing two or three guys that could do all four things they have this one guy that you can put him uh, with Elias Pettersson you have Elias and Elias and that's pretty sick and you keep Besser and Miller together you can load up the lotto line and have Lindholm center a second line with with Suter and Mikheyev or Hoglander whatever it may be so it gives the Canucks a lot of flexibility a lot of options we gave up a lot for sure five assets but none of those five assets Drew are going to help the team win this year and I think that's the biggest distinction Lindholm's going to help the Canucks right now. And we get him five weeks before the deadline. Acclimated, acclimatized, all those words. On the other side, Kuzmenko, fun, great guy. No defense. Like, I, I loved him, uh, but but he's uh, he's kind of dropped off a little bit. Brustavich might be good. Yoni Yormo, not going to be good. And then two draft picks, one of them at the end of the first round because we're, we're doing so well. And then a fourth rounder that could become a third rounder. Yeah, that, that looks like a lot. And it is a lot. But that's not what the Canucks need right now. What did you make of Lindholm's comments last night at the All Star Game, saying basically that he wasn't not willing to to sign with with the, with the Calgary Flames? Yeah, well, I thought two immediate things. One of them is from a Calgary Flames uh, organization's perspective, I whether that was them saying that or a reporter leaking it. It you obviously it's almost like a cover your butt kind of mechanism, right? <laughs> because if you don't say that, then it looks like uh, that you you let them go without trying. So I, I get where that might have come out, and I get where Lindholm is probably wanting to deny it. But it also gives me a little bit of hope because if he's willing to say I'm willing, to, I was willing to stay in Calgary. And that tells me maybe he'd be willing to stay in Vancouver. We got the whole Swedish mafia here, and we have <laughs> yeah, and then and we have a really good team. And I, I get it. The, the The thing that scares Canucks fans is this could be a rental. We, he might be gone at the end of this playoff run. But I think we're kind of using that as the as the floor and expecting that. And anything else might be a bonus. A couple of conspiracy theorists saying this is the the insurance in case Elias Pettersson takes his one-year contract and then walks after the end of next year, but I'm not worried about that yet. This, I want to be positive today. <laughs> of course. Well, today, I, every day, I think. Mr. Yeah, yeah, Mr. there you Clay. go. <laughs> uh, Mr. Emu, I should say. Am I saying yeah. that right, by the way, Emu? It's actually Emo, but uh, you say emo. whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's why I ask, because people yeah. will just, you, you, some people will be too nice to be like, oh, yeah, you can, you can call me Bill and my name's Bob, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah, um, Emo, but yeah, Emo, thank you. Okay, perfect. Um, you mentioned Pedersen, so I, I have to ask you that because, you know, Habs fans were always looking for that superstar forward that we just can't seem to find. And Kent Hughes and Jeff Gordon have promised to try to make that happen. Mm. Through this, I, I shouldn't say they've tried, promised to make a superstar come to Montreal, but they do promise to make more trades. And, you know, we saw the offer sheet years ago for Sebastian Ajo that never <laughs> manifested for the Canadians and just became just a big PR, you know, showing, right? But in terms of Pedersen, I mean, this guy to me, like he's, He's got to be going nowhere as far as Vancouver Canucks fans hopefully are concerned. I mean, wh what would be, I don't, I don't even want to ask necessarily what would not make him stay in Vancouver, but yeah. what maybe what wouldn't it make him stay in Vancouver at this point based on, you know, a trade like to a trade like this or yeah, and, great and, if, and if Lindholm yeah. stays, I should say. Yeah. Great question, Drew. At the off season, he was in Sweden, Elliot Friedman. There's that famous uh, interview of them on a boat somewhere. It looked pretty cool actually. And PD just said, I'm not going to resign now because the window had opened, right? We are one year until your contract ends. I'm not going right. to sign now. I want to see how we do. I want to make sure that we're on the right track. And a lot of Canucks fans said, that, that's fine. That makes sense. I would do the same thing. Others were like, oh, no, he's going to leave already. Da, da, da. So it's been, uh, man, it, despite, that's the one, it's weird. 
that's the one storyline that's kind of I wouldn't say it's a black cloud, but it's certainly hovering over this team yeah. right now. Now, Petey could sign Drew right at the end of the season. He liked everything that Alvin and the team has been doing, especially if they they do a long late playoff, a long playoff run. And he might sign, no harm, no foul, all things done. Right? Everything's fine. But there is a chance he pulls a Kachak or says, uh, you know, I'm not going to re-sign with you guys, so you better you can figure it out from here. I would love uh, make him a hundred million dollar player. Eight years times twelve point five. I've had that in my head. I've heard a lot of people. They don't talk about AAV. They talk about total contract value, right? I'm a hundred million dollar player as opposed to I'm a twelve point five million dollar player. Whatever you want to. Uh, there's some thought that he might take an Austin Matthews set contract, a four or five year contract, where you get a few of his UFA years, but not mm-hmm. all of them. Uh, at this point, as long as he's not signing a one year, like offer, not offer sheet, but a one year arbit- not arbitration, but just a one year, like minimum or a one year, whatever, just to hold him over. I, I want to see at least a four year deal. I don't want a two or three. I would love a four or five. I would absolutely love a seven or eight. But um, there was some talk that the Canucks were also, just as PD was trying to see how, what the Canucks do, the Canucks were trying to see how PD did. The Canucks don't have to see what PD, we know what PD can do. Like he's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he could be a top five center in this league. He probably is in, in that just in that second tier behind the, behind the superstars. So I, I want him, the Canucks fans want him. Uh, he's a little different. He's not as like uh, lovable as Brock Besser. He's not as great in the media as Quinn Hughes. He just kind of does his thing and keeps to himself. And uh, you, you got to take it or leave it with him. Well, I, I think that they want to uh, take it. <laughs> they want to take it with them. They want to... <laughs> They want to keep him around. So I want to ask you about Rick Tockett then because we saw last year, and I'll tell you a very quick Bruce Boudreaux story. Sure. Uh, just after he got let go to Vancouver, he actually checked into my hotel, and I got to check him in. So that was interesting. And I, I got to tell you, I, w- I don't get starstruck that often, but I was like, holy smokes, it's Bruce Boudreaux. Like, I'm a little starstruck right now. <laughs> like, That's you cool. Know. You tell so, him you're a hockey fan? I, I didn't at first. I was like, okay. you know what? I'm not even going to bring it up. I'm not even yeah. gonna bring up the whole hockey thing, and then eventually, I he kept you know come by front desk, and um, so I'm like, I gotta I gotta ask this guy at least one question, right? So I bring Wonderful. up the hockey thing, and I mentioned I'm a Montreal fan, and he goes, uh, "Yeah, we all have our faults." <laughs> if that's something I would say. Some would say I'm the the Asian version of Bruce Boudreau, but that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> I still have my job though. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's a good story. Yeah, but he was really cool, and then, and then sure enough, I I actually I re- I really did want to ask him a hockey question. I was like, you know what, we got our Niagara Ice Dogs here who have just been. And this season, they're bottom of the OHL. They're not good at all. But uh, I said, you know, can you help us with the ice dogs? Like kind of half serious, like not really serious. And then sure enough, his son gets hired as an assistant coach. And then now he's the head coach. And then Bruce Boudreau gets hired as a senior advisor to the ice dogs. So I was like, what are the odds of that? Right? Like the one question I ask him actually basically comes true. Yes, that's that's a really, really cool story. That's that's awesome. Were you there wow. for any Bruce There It Is chance at Canucks games oh, or what? Certainly was. I was there for his first game. I was there for his last game. And uh, it was unreal because he was the most popular part of the team. And he came in, the Canucks rattled off six or seven straight. And then that was tough. And uh, actually, it's funny you mentioned that. That was the stain, the initial stain on Rutherford and Alvin because they basically walked in. And then that offseason, they said, um, slow down. We're actually not extending Bruce yet. He's got one more year left on his contract. And you know how it goes, Drew. Usually if you're a GM or a coach in the, your last year, that, they call it a lame duck year for a reason. You're either going to go or you negotiate extension, which ultimately you get fired eventually. Everyone does, right? So for them, the fact, for them to say that out loud right away is um, point blank. Uh, a lot of fans were upset, but um, they knew what they were doing, obviously. So Rick Tockett comes in yeah. and – now the Canucks are they are they still first in the NHL right now? I don't have the standings in front of me. Tied right. with our best friends, the Boston Bruins. <laughs> oh, oh man! And I think you guys would mop the floor with them if it even. I don't think they're ever gonna. There's ever gonna be a Stanley Cup rematch. I mean, Boston's very very good still. But yeah. anyway, that's that's another I, topic for another yeah. day. You know, talk about 2011. But yeah, um, trying to stay positive here. Trying to stay positive. Trying to, here. trying to stay positive for all, for everyone's sake, including Habs fans who are yeah. up and down the season. And I'm going to get to Sean Monahan in a minute. But I do want to ask you about Rick Tockett. I mean, what, what is he? Is he really the biggest factor in the way the Canucks are playing this year? What's what's been different? You watch them all the time. Yeah. What's been different in the this version of the Canucks versus previous years? Like, what's so different about the way they're playing under Rick Tockett? 
Yeah, I'd say it's three things. Uh, and Rick Tockett is the number one thing, uh, number one factor. He came in at the end of last season. People weren't sure. And it's funny that he gets, uh, <laughs> he gets, they make fun of him in this, in, in this market because he's always talking about, he has all these catchphrases, meet pressure with pressure. And he talks about like all these S words, systems, structure, staples, uh, super good looking. He talk, all these S words. And <laughs> he basically is, is unrelenting in them. And players love him. The players love him because they respect him. He he's he was you know how good he was like a, t- a prototypical power forward uh, back in the day. And he's uh, he's he's a good communicator. He's not the most eloquent, but he is a very good communicator. I think players love him. And he's also surrounded himself with a Hall of Fame. Like these guys could actually put on a their own their own team. He's got the Sedins, Adam Foot, and Sergey Gonchar as his coaches with him, and Mikey O. So that it's a pretty good group. So I say number one is the uh, the players are bought in. And at the end of last season, he said, this is what you need to work on in the off season, especially when it comes to learning our system structure and coming come to camp in good shape. Number two, the team has uh, made so many good depth moves. On, up front, our bottom six completely revamped, including um, Sam Lafferty, guys like that. On D, which is the biggest uh, difference, they bring in guys like Cole and Susie and, and Zadora of midseason trade. And on the uh, in goal, Casey DeSmith has done amazing work as, as Demko's backup. So in all three places, forward D and goaltending, they've um, they've they've really beefed up their depth, and that's why the team's so good. Finally, um, uh, you, you see them. There are five of them now with Lindholm, six players at the All Star game. Yes, I get half of them were voted in, but still uh, breakout years, career years for Hughes, Pedersen. Besser, Miller, Demko, and now Elias Lindholm. So it's uh, those three factors. So everything is clicking at the right time is, is basically so what far. I'm getting from you. Yeah, and uh, Philip Hronick, don't forget uh, that trade that we made at the end of last season. Um, he's he's almost like a, an off-season acquisition as well. So our, our blue line is completely revamped from last year. Only Hughes and Myers are the only holdovers. Okay, well, I do want to bring up really quickly the uh, the lineup because I feel like this is this is pretty relevant to uh, take a look at here, and they've already got on daily faceoff, Lindholm as the first line center with Pedersen and Mikheyev. So I don't know if that's going to be. <laughs> yeah, I could see it. Actually, that's that was if you if you put Pedersen in the middle and then Lindholm on the left, that was Kuzmenko's spot. So that's how they've been running right now with Suter playing with Miller and Besser. Yeah. Okay, and then you mentioned the defense pairs, and what do you make of them uh, making Quinn Hughes captain? Did you think it was the right choice? Some people felt like once they resigned Pedersen that he would be the guy, but uh, clearly they went with Quinn here. Yeah, a lot of us were thinking it would be PD over Quinn, uh, but near the end of last season, we started to see hints um, from the team. He was the one who thanked the 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 season, not the season ticket holders, the the fans at the last game. He was the one doing more media, and with. Pedersen's um, contract situation, he was just still signed for another three or four years. Um, I, I think, well, the optimist would have said, well, make PD the captain. That might convince him to stay. It was more, no, how can we hitch our wagon to a guy who maybe, well, I guess you could, but who's not signed past next year kind of thing. So, uh, and he's just been great. To, uh, the On and off the ice, off the ice, you just trust that he's good in the locker room, more of a quiet leader on the ice. What can you say? He's, he's, uh, he might win the Norris Trophy this year. He's been amazing. Well, I think, yeah, he, he's been fun to watch, to say the least. And yeah. uh, somebody that, you know, as someone like me who is a defenseman and I'm not a great skater, oh, I, play more, I play more ball hockey than ice hockey, but uh, he's he is fun to watch, man. We're, we're only hoping that Lane Hudson can be a shadow of oh. what, uh, what Quinn Hughes has become. So, How far away is the Hudson player? So Hudson is actually, uh, he, he was taken in the Slavkovsky draft if you will mm. so uh he was taken 62nd overall he's going to be signing with the canadians at the end of his ncaa season in march here yeah and then uh you know he's going to be a really dyna- hopefully hopefully a very dynamic offensive defenseman but a guy that uh his crossovers are elite um you know he's somebody that he's going to power play the quarterback or what i just said that backwards didn't i yeah <laughs> i hear you i know what you mean i know what you mean <laughs> He's going to quarterback the power play. There's no Baileys in my coffee this morning, I swear. Um, but he's going to quarterback the power play for the yeah. Canes, hopefully for years to come. But it's funny because Vancouver was the one team that we thought we might lose Gallagher to a few mm-hmm. years ago before he re-signed his six-year extension. Right. Well, so, funny. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In, in this little... instance, yeah. I don't know. I think you guys uh, are okay without him. But <laughs> he's a bit of a dirty player. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll do that another day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, typically he wasn't. That was the whole right. thing. Like he right. was just a very annoying, pesky player to play against. Gotcha. But 
regardless. Gotcha. But hey, man, I just want to thank you so much for jumping on. Uh, this was actually a lot of fun. It went by very fast, which means it must have been a lot of fun. Yeah. So uh, yeah. thanks for uh, for taking the time, Clay. I'd love to do this again with you, my friend. Yeah, I'd love to jump on with you here, and I'd love to have you over on my channel as well. Very simple, um, um, unsolicited Canuck Clay, both on YouTube and on X. Would appreciate any Canucks fans that are watching you. Uh, come over and, and give me a follow, and we'll have some fun together for the rest of the season. Please do, you guys. If you want positive Vancouver Canucks takes, I mean, right from the seat of his car, ladies and gentlemen, Clay go. will... He will be in there regardless. If news breaks, he will jump in that car. He'll post a video. And I think that's an encouragement to anybody doing YouTube. You don't you don't have to have a fancy set. You don't have to no. have fancy cameras and lights like we try to. Uh, yeah. Because we've been doing it for a little while. You a lot longer. Yeah. But you can make it happen right from the seat of your own car. So I think that's a really cool encouragement for, for folks out there too. But uh, Get your phone and get yeah. a channel and, and just start creating. That's it. Hit record. There you go. All right. Well, thanks again, Clay. And... Uh, can't wait to see you and do this again. All right. Thanks, Drew. Take care. Thank you.